Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon sir. Wassalam sir. <coughs> okay so for today we are going to learn, uh, to do uh, to discuss tutorial 9 uh, regarding the uh, steady state error. Okay so firstly I hope uh, you guys are doing okay on the quiz 4 uh, that uh, you have submitted uh, yesterday. So um, all of the quiz, I think we will, I will discuss about the quiz uh, maybe uh, after, maybe after we finish all the lectures. Okay, okay so in this tutorial, so first question number one, determine the steady state error under the input 5ut, 5ut and 5t squared ut for the system below. Okay, so uh, let's recap on uh, this lecture, steady state error. Okay, so we have learned uh, last week that um, to determine the steady state error under certain uh, input uh, under certain input types so firstly we need to determine the type of the uh, forward trans function gs okay so the type uh, depends on uh, this uh, equation here okay so gs equals the multiplication of s plus poles, uh, plus zeros divided by s power of n times the product of s plus poles. So this n here, s power of n, so this n here uh, will determine whether uh, the system will have steady state error or no steady state error under certain inputs. Okay, So in this question, you are given a uh, step input, a ramp input, and also a parable input, but with multi multiple of five, okay? The constant is five. So if you look at this GS here, so S is power of N, N is equals zero. So there is no S power of N, okay? Basically it's S power of zero, so it equals one. So we can uh, straight away know that this is a type zero system. So for a type zero system, we will only have a steady state error under step input only. Okay, uh, me good. Okay, so type zero system, we have a steady state error. Uh, when given a step input, but we'll have infinity steady state error under RAM input and parabolic input. So to make things easy and faster, uh, so we don't discuss uh, 5T UT and 5T squared UT, okay? Because we know that uh, this will produce infinity steady state error. So we only discuss uh, 5T UT. Okay, so, but later you can um, try yourself uh, what happens if you have uh, the GS has S power of 1 or S power of 2. What happens if uh, you have uh, RAM input and parabolic input. Okay, but uh, from this uh, analysis, we know that uh, the system will have a steady state error when, uh, when the input is 5 UT. Okay, while the other input will produce infinity steady state error. Okay, so let's uh, do this. Okay, so uh, the formula for steady state error. Is a uh, limit of uh, s approaching zero. S times rs over one plus gs okay so you can also use this formula uh, from the table 
Okay, so you can also use this formula which is uh, a lot quicker. Okay, but uh, whatever, we use uh, this formula, okay. So just substitute. Uh, so firstly, uh, our RT is 5 UT. So we convert into RS. So we get 5 over S. Okay, so we use uh, Laplace transform, okay. And then uh, just substitute uh, into the formula. So GS is this one, it's in the box here. So we just substitute in the uh, formula. Okay, so limit of S approaching zero when S multiplied by five over S divided by one plus 120 times S plus two over s plus 3 times s plus 4. Okay, and then uh, uh, sort of substitute equal s equals 0. So you will get 5 divided by 1 plus 120 times 2. Uh, gado, gado. Tutup mic. Jangan lupa tutup mic. Okay. Um. Okay, so use your calculator. So we get uh, 5 over 21. 5 over 21. Okay, this is your steady state error. Okay, so in your project also, uh, some of you tries to calculate steady state error. Okay, so basically, uh, uh, the idea was to give the project after learning steady state error. But uh, since uh, all of you didn't learn about it yet, so uh, uh, it's okay lah, I skip the calculation part uh, for the steady state error. But some of you still uh, calculate, which is uh, okay lah, you take uh, some effort to learn. Oh, ni je soalan untuk nombor satu. Okay, so it's 5 over 21. Okay, so question number two. Find the gain K so that the steady state error of a unity feedback system with forward transfer function uh, below is 10% uh, and 1%. Okay, so unity feedback, so similar uh, the similar arrangement with uh, question number one, but the GS is this is given here K times S plus 12 divided by S plus 14 times S plus 18. Okay, so uh, unity feedback, when the question says unity feedback, it has this arrangement here. Okay. Uh, jai. Okay, so the question wants uh, when the steady state error is 10%. So firstly, we look at this GS and determine the type of the system. Okay, so it's type 0 because n equals 0. So uh, GS is uh, type 0. Okay, so for a type 0 system, we only have a uh, steady state error when uh, it is applied with uh, step input or input um uh step input uh, step input okay a step input is applied then you have a steady state error for a type 0 so let's look at the formula again so for a type 0 the formula is this one 1 plus kp 1 over 1 plus kp uh, so this is a steady state error and KP, uh, okay. Okay, so here we need to determine uh, our KP, uh, which is 
uh, the same as the gain k here. Oh, look at the balik. Apa ni lah. Okay, so kp, sorry, kp equals uh, limit of s approaching zero for gs, okay. So firstly, we need to determine kp and then we can determine k uh, by using the second formula here. Uh, kp equals limit when s approaching zero of gs. Okay, so first question is when uh, steady state error is 10%. Yes, Warren. Okay. Uh, okay. So steady state error is ten percent. So first, when steady state error is ten percent or zero point one. Okay. So find KP. So KP equals 9. Then I uh, use the second formula to find K. So limit of S approaching 0 for GS equals uh, K times 12 over 14 times 18 equals 9. So K equals K equals 189. Okay, now we get um, our K. So our GS becomes 189. Okay, but uh, before we can uh, proceed uh, with uh, whether uh, this k is correct or not, we need to check for the stability, okay? Meaning that uh, when GS has this k equals 189, is the system stable? Okay, sometimes the system might not be stable. So we need to check for the system stability. So to determine, to check the system stability, we need to use Routerwitz uh, criteria. So we need to find a uh, closed loop transfer function TS equals, so it's a unity feedback. So it becomes uh, GS over one plus uh, GS. So uh, simply calculate from this GS. So you get 189 times S plus 12 over S plus 14 times s plus 18 plus 189 times s plus 12 okay and then uh simplify the denominator okay or you take the denominator okay uh expand Ah, banyak ya. Okay, then we can use uh, Rutherwitz uh, criteria. Okay, so 1, 221, 200, 2520. So S0 equals 2520. So if you look at the row, uh, col column number 1, there is no sign changes. So in uh, column 1, 
uh, no sign changes. So, uh, when k equals 189, uh, system is stable. Okay, so valid lah. Uh, value uh, k equals 189. Okay. Now we go for the second uh, steady state error, which is 1%. So E infinity equals 1 over 1 plus Kp equals 1%. So 1% or 0 0.01. Okay, so find Kp. So KP equals 101. Salah je. Sorry, salah. Ninety-nine, sorry. Okay, so KP equals ninety-nine. Then uh, we find the gain k using the second formula the limit formula so limit s approaching in approaching zero for gs equals k times 12 over 14 times 18 equals 99 So K equals 2079. Then we check for stability. So GS equals 2079 times S plus 12. S plus 14 times S plus 18. Okay, so TS equals 2079 S plus 12 equal uh, divided by s plus 14 times s plus 18 plus 2079 times s plus 12 okay so find it uh, expand the denominator Okay, and then uh, make wrap table. Okay, so it should be stable. Okay, so the system is stable also. So from column one, no sign changes. So, um, k equals two se zero seven nine. Produce a stable system. Okay, so that's it for this for today. <laughs> Any question? Uh, sir Ya yeah, saya For checking stability tu memang uh, Kena buat lah table tu Sedangkan dia bukan ke In this question like uh, GS tu dekat S plus 14 uh, Multiply by S plus 18 tu bukan ke nilai tu dah Pulse and then tak ada hmm. sign changes pun Dua-dua plus uh, Untuk case ni uh, dia Stable lah Mungkin uh, untuk Kes-kes uh, lain So kita um, 
dia punya rules dia memang macam tu lepas dah cari key kita just test uh, to check balik whether dia stable ke tak sometimes dia maybe tak stable but for this case dia stable lah uh, obvious lah stable macam tu oh so semua kena check lah uh, 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 sometimes dia uh, dia tak stable ada ada certain cases lah uh, yang tu tak tahu saya pun tak pernah jumpa Okay, okay. Okay, sir. Ah. <laughs> ah, sir. Yep. Tadi kan saya ada tulis uh, N sama dengan kosong. Betul tak? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yang tu untuk apa, sir? Ah, itu dia punya type. Uh, GS tu, uh, sistem tu punya type. So, uh, kita assume untuk uh, steady state error ni. So, GS dia punya uh, general equation dia lah so gs uh, s plus z1 s plus z2 uh, multiply ke multiply s plus z2 multiply s plus z3 sampai z n divided by s power of n times s plus p1 times s plus p2 and so on so n ni if n uh, n ni menentukan the system type okay system type so if type 0 uh, dan table tadi lah if uh, if type 0 then you only have steady state error when you have step input for type 1 you will have uh, this thing dalam table ni and type 2 ada mungkin sampai type 3 4 and 5 uh, banyak lagi lah sebenarnya tapi jadi, uh, jadi, ah sorry uh, jadinya kita tak uh, kalau kita guna type 1 dengan type 2 tak boleh saya untuk ah tak boleh ah tak boleh sebab dia uh, untuk soalan ni uh, dia type 0 sebab tak s power of n dia tak ada kan Tak ada S power oh. of N. So, N dia sama dengan zero lah. Faham saya? Uh, so, macam tu je. So, disebabkan uh, topik ni dia uh, sangat senang. Uh, biasanya tak keluar final. <laughs> Tapi, dia guna untuk uh, lecture chapter 5 nanti. Uh, saya rasa kita sambung lecture lah. Uh, macam sikit sangat. Okay. Sebenarnya kita, kita ada banyak masa lagi, uh, banyak lagi masa boleh uh, boleh cover awal lah uh, untuk uh, subjek ni Tapi uh, kita habis awal lah, so, uh, boleh lah berjoli Okay so kita sambung lecture tiba kan, baru nak uh, makan Sekejap Okay, so uh, we continue with our lectures. So lecture 4C will be about uh, the introduction to root lockers. Okay, so this topic is uh, one of the killer question lah in final. Usually in final exam, when when it comes to root lockers, uh, student dia tak jawab. Okay, uh, ada yang jawab tapi tak sampai habis. So root lockers ni dia, uh, dia confusing, quite confusing. So what is root lockers? So uh, you have learned a lot of things uh, since lecture one, uh, chapter one until uh, steady state error and you uh, already, already know a little bit about poles and zeros and when you change the value of k uh, for, for gs just now uh, you you will get some sometimes you will get gs to be unstable okay sometimes but most of the time which like I uh, it is stable. So root locus is something that um, a presentation or graphical presentation to show whether a system is stable or not when you change the value of k. Okay. So let's uh, go and see what is is this about. Okay. So after completing this lecture, uh, all of you should be able to understand the problems with control system that requires the use of root locus 
and also determine uh, some properties of root locus. Okay, so what is root locus? So root locus is a graphical presentation of closed loop poles as the system gain parameter. <clears throat> okay, it's very, so let's say you have a system like this. Okay, so you have a gain K and a GS here and a forward uh, and a feedback transfer function H. Okay, sometimes when you change this K, your system will behave differently. Okay, maybe if you put negative K, then system will behave differently. If you put positive K, uh, it behave uh, the other way around. Okay. Uh, but how to, uh, how can we know what happened if we change the K? So we can use root lock, uh, root Hewitt's criteria okay, to check for system stability. But sometimes we want to determine the poles, okay, the exact value of poles when we change this K value. Okay, so for example, if you have uh, this trans function K divided by S times S plus two. Okay, so this is exactly a uh, similar question, something similar to our tutorial, okay? So when we change this K, for example, if you use K equals 15, so you get a system that has an overshoot or under dam, okay? Can under dam can. And then uh, if we reduce the K value, then the system behavior change, okay? From under dam to uh, over dam, entah lupa, okay? So let's say if you use k equals 15, you get an overshoot. But if you use k equals 1, you don't have overshoot, but the system uh, reach, uh, reaches steady state value very, very slowly. Okay. So this is, uh, although the system is still stable, okay, because it has steady state value, it's still stable, but the behavior uh, different. Okay. One is uh, has overshoot. The other one uh, don't have the overshoot, okay? So sometimes you want to design a system that has no overshoot, okay? So you don't want this K equals 15 or K equals 2 and also the uh, the light blue one. You don't want these three systems. So you want the, black, uh, the blue and the red colored uh, system. So K equals 1 and K equals 0 0.5. Sometimes if you... Uh, adjusted K too much or you put a very big K, the system can become unstable, okay, sometimes, okay. So uh, at what range of K uh, yang sesuai that can produce a stable system as what we desired that has overshoot ke, that has faster rise time and so on. So we can use uh, Rautrowitz criteria, of course. But uh, Sometimes in um, control system, uh, we uh, it's easier if we can uh, use uh, an alternative method. Okay, so in this case, uh, root uh, no root locus. Okay, so let's um, review a little bit about um, transfer function of a system. Okay, so let's say you have this uh, system with a forward transfer function k times g s. Okay, so the top one is always, we call it forward transfer function. And then the feedback one, we call it feedback transfer function. And then we find the closed loop transfer function by simplifying this uh, block diagram. Okay, so you use uh, feedback loop, uh, punya formula. So you get this kg over one plus kgh. So each of this G and H has its own numerator and also denominator. So we have numerator of G and the denominator of G and also numerator of H and the denominator of H. Let's say you expand, you put uh, the numerator and denominator, you expand. Okay, so you end up with this trans function K and G times DH divided by DG times th plus k times ng times nh. So if you look at this uh, transfer function, then maybe you want to use uh, Rauhwitz criteria or whatever. So you will 
uh, take the denominator. Okay. So now the, the denominator, if you want to find the poles, now the denominator has this k here. Okay. It's a combination of numerator and denominator. And the poles now depends on this k. So if you change k, then the poles will change as well. So therefore, with closed loop system, the poles are not easy to find. Okay, So it's hard for us to find the poles for this uh, transfer function because we have this k here. So we need to know the k value so that we can find the poles. Okay, So if we don't know the k value, then we can only determine the range of k. Okay? But we cannot determine the poles of the transfer function. So therefore, it's easier if we can plot something that uh, represent the poles when we change the value of k. For example, we uh, we apply k equals one. What will be the poles value? Then we plot in a graph, and then k equals two. Uh, we find the poles. We plot on the same same graph, and then maybe we connect the graph of the different poles values for different gain of k. Okay, so that's the idea of root lockers. Okay, so let's look at uh, another example. So let's say this is your GS and this is your uh, feedback transfer function HS. So we find the closed loop transfer function. And now the bottom here, the denominator here, if you want to find the poles, then it can be uh, S equal zero or minus two, minus four. But suddenly you have K here. So is it depends on uh, K, like minus one times K or minus three times K. So uh, we cannot simply find the post here unless we know the value of K, okay? So here for the post, we have to factor and it also depends on k, okay? So unless we know the value of k, then we can find poles. But let's say if we don't know the value of k, then we cannot determine the poles, okay? So one of the technique to determine uh, exactly where is the poles is uh, known as root locus technique, okay? Okay, so before we go into uh, learning more about root locus, uh, we need to go back a little bit and understand the concept of complex number. So I think uh, when you do the project, uh, project one, uh, when you uh, find the roots or poles for second order system, you will find that the poles has uh, imaginary value. Okay, Imaginary value, uh, usually we use i equals square root minus one. Uh, but in this uh, lecture, we use J, okay? So this is a complex number. Okay, so before we go into detail, let's uh, refresh a bit about complex number. So what is a complex number? So we, uh, we always assume that a complex number, let's say S equals a real part sigma plus J, which is a square root minus one, times omega. So omega is the imaginary part of the complex number. So if we look at this and if we plot in S plane, okay, so uh, this is your real part on the real axis and the J omega is on the imaginary axis. So this is a sort of like a vector. Okay. So complex number can be uh, equivalent, okay? can be made equivalent as a vector. Okay, so it has an angle, theta. So theta is measured from the real axis, positive real axis. And this vector also has a magnitude, m, or the length, the length of this uh, arrow here. So vector has magnitude and direction. So magnitude is the uh, length, and direction is the theta. So if uh, we can, uh, if you still remember to determine M, you just use Pythagoras theorem or 
equals square root of sigma squared plus omega squared. Okay, so this is uh, the magnitude. And the angle is uh, tangent minus 1 omega over sigma. So angle here, okay, so please uh, remember, always uh, measure from positive sigma, okay? So let's say if your vector is here, so the angle is measured uh, from positive sigma, okay? Okay, so if you still remember complex number, uh, belajar masa matrix, ataupun kalau tak belajar masa matrix, maybe uh, dekat UMP belajar, right? So the angle is measured from positive real axis, okay? So it's not this angle, not this one, but this angle. Okay, so it doesn't necessary to use this formula, okay? Uh, tak semesti guna formula ni. Apa-apa uh, formula, as long as you know that this is the angle. Okay, sometimes it can be 90 plus tangent minus 1 something or 180 minus tangent minus 1 something. Okay, it depends on how you uh, measure the angle, okay? Uh, how, you uh, how you calculate the tangent. And then uh, either 90 plus or 180 minus, okay? As long as it is measured from positive sigma. Okay, so we can now represent the complex number as equals sigma plus j omega using a vector a magnitude and the direction. So S also equals the magnitude and the angle theta. Okay, so the symbol triangle here is angle, okay? Or direction, okay? So we have the magnitude angle theta okay so we can represent the complex number sigma plus j omega or magnitude angle theta okay so let's look at another uh, one example okay so let's say we have a transfer function fs and we want to uh, describe this transfer function using only magnitude and angle so we know that a transfer function, let's say f, so it is uh, made of s plus uh, z1, s plus z2, s plus z3, okay, and so on until uh, how many uh, zeros that you have. And then divided by uh, s plus p1, s plus p2, and so on. Okay. So we can represent this uh, the multiplication of all the products of s plus z1, s plus z2, s plus z3 using this big pi symbol. Okay. So the big pi symbol here represent the product. Okay. Product of okay. Hasil darab. Okay. Hasil darab s plus z1, s plus z2 s plus z3 and so on divided by product of s plus p1 s plus p2 s plus p3 and so on okay so we can represent our transfer function now using this okay so to find the magnitude so we simply find the product of length of uh, the zeros divided by the length uh, the product of length of the poles okay so what we need to do is we find the length of each um, zero and poles of your transfer function and then find the product and then find using this formula product of zero divided by product of the pole the magnitude okay and then to find the angle we simply find the angles of all the zeros and then sum Okay, tambahkan sum minus the summation of the angle of all poles. Okay. So, these two formula here, uh, ingatlah sampai habis semester ni. Okay, so to find the magnitude, it's the product of zero length divided by product of pole length. To find the angle, it's the sum of the zero angle 
minus the sum of the poles angles. Okay, maybe I do example first. Let's look. Okay, so let's say you have this example. So Fs equals S plus 1 divided by S, S plus 2. Okay, so let's say you are given S equals 1 uh, minus 3 plus uh, J4. Okay, maybe you substitute first uh, this S. And you substitute. Uh, try to simplify as much as you can. So here it simplifies uh, the top one and the bottom one. Uh, it made uh, into two uh, bracket without expanding. Okay. Then to find the uh, magnitude, you can simply uh, find the magnitude uh, for each of this one by one. Okay, each of this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so let's try find this magnitude of the top one first. So maybe m one equals square root minus two squared plus four squared so you get square root 20 okay so this one and then uh, we find this the first one at the bottom here m2 equals square root minus 3 squared plus 4 squared so you get 16 plus 9 5 okay so it's here and then M3, square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared. Oh. So equals square root 17. So it's here. And then to find the angle, so the first one here, negative 2 plus J4. So uh, what you can do is, uh, okay, you need confusing skate. So maybe uh, what you can do is, um, maybe you can draw it here. So minus 2 and 4 here. So the angle is here. Okay, so to find this angle, you use uh, the formula just now, tangent. So I will use um, tangent minus one. And then minus one of um, vanilla four over two, four over two, a abala. Okay, kira lu. Yep. Okay, so uh, tangent uh, 4 over 2 and then uh, 180 minus, okay. okay. So 180 minus tangent minus 1, 4 over 2, you get 116.6, okay. Or you can use uh, 90 plus... Uh, And use also 90 plus but uh tangent minus one two over four okay so uh if you use four over two then 180 minus if you use two over four then 90 plus okay so uh bergantung pada cara awak uh cara korang tengok kat mana angle tu okay and then uh, this is the angle of the zero. 
So it's a plus. And then uh, divided by angle of the poles. So you minus, okay, minus the angle of the poles, okay? So did not divide, minus angles of the poles, the sum of the angles of the poles. So you can try first, uh, later, check whether this is correct or not. And then you can um, simplify the transfer function with S equals minus three plus four J in terms of magnitude and the angle. Okay, so uh, okay, that's it for today. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, now uh, go and try tutorial number 10. Okay, so tutorial number 10 uh, is related to um, this introduction of root locus. We will uh, continue this lecture uh, on Wednesday, okay? So tutorial 10. Okay, so you can try uh, using the uh, the things that I taught you just now uh, for tutorial number 10. But maybe, uh, oh, ni belum belajar lagi. Maybe you can try first and find uh, the angle and magnitude, okay? Okay, any question before we end this lecture? Oh, no, sir. Okay, so um, uh, if no question, we uh, we meet again on Wednesday. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.